let's look at what's happening in America to these Oriental Orthodox churches. In 2022, the data came out from the 2020 U.S. Religion Census. Alongside that census was the 2020 Census of U.S. Orthodox Churches, which provided detailed statistics on the state of both Eastern and Oriental Orthodox Churches in the United States. In 10 years, the growth was an astounding 67 percent, from 294,000 adherents in 2010 to 491,000 in 2020. But all in all, the data for Oriental Orthodoxy is good news. Of the nine groups included in the survey, only the Armenian Catholicate of Sicilia does not have a parish added after 2010. Meanwhile, nearly half of the Ethiopian Orthodox parishes in the U.S. are new since 2010. 43% of the Coptic Church's parishes are that new, and 36% of the Eritrean Orthodox Church's parishes. As for adherents, the survey in 2010 didn't get the numbers of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church or Kananaya churches, so there's nothing to compare the 2020 numbers to, but the numbers overall are very positive. The Coptic Church added over 85,000 adherents, and the Eritrean Orthodox Church skyrocketed by 227%. One reason for the growth of these churches is their embrace of immigrant communities. Many of the Oriental Orthodox churches still have a strong connection to the culture and language of the places they hail from. Ethiopia is the number two African country that immigrants to the USA originate, and this has been a boon to the Ethiopian Orthodox churches in America. In 2011, there were around 150,000 people in the U.S. who were born in Ethiopia, and in 2020, there were 292,000 Ethiopian people in the United States. The U.S. is also the most common destination for Ethiopian emigrants. This has led to thriving Ethiopian Orthodox congregations like this cathedral in Las Vegas. Notably, a scroll through their Facebook page shows that they communicate primarily in the Amharic language. This is a bit of a hint to the growth of their churches. When people immigrate to America, they like to find a community that shares in their heritage, cultural, linguistic, and also religious heritage. Look at a map of German immigration and a map of the Lutheran population in the U.S., for example. But as time goes on, the first-generation immigrants will have children that very well may end up learning English as their first language, and eventually there will be some who don't learn Amharic at all. The Eastern Orthodox churches are learning this lesson as the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese is seeing large declines now that the grandchildren and great-grandchildren of Greek immigrants no longer feel a strong connection to the church that their ancestors held dear. For the Oriental Orthodox, their strongest immigration to the U.S. is happening decades later than the Eastern Orthodox adherence immigration was. The Rockefeller Foundation Aspen Institute Diaspora Program tracked 15 diaspora communities in the United States, and Ethiopia was the most recently settled group, with 60% of immigrants in the U.S. as of 2014 having arrived since 2000. So with their great leaps forward and the benefit of the data in this information age, the Oriental Orthodox churches can learn lessons and possibly avoid the pitfalls of some of the Eastern Orthodox churches. For now, they can celebrate their strong surge into the American Christian scene, and if this story repeats for one or two more decades,